Good afternoon, my name is Jim Caraba and I'm an Agricultural Safety Specialist with, with NICAM, the New York Center for Agricultural Medicine and Health. So I'm going to talk today about power takeoff safety. So do you all, are you all familiar with the power takeoff? So what does it actually do? That right there runs the equipment. <laughs> yeah, it runs the equipment. It takes um, power, it's a rotating drive shaft and it takes power from the tractor's engine and brings it back to the implement that you're using. So it powers the equipment, like you said. Um, and what type, what piece of equipment is this? Oh, it's a manure spreader. Manure spreader, yep, right. And um, here's the, the PTO shaft. What is it missing? Oh, that's the guard. The guard, yeah. So if you have any um, equipment with that has PTO shafts like that, you really want to make sure you put the guards on it. So. Um, Here's an example of a, of a power shaft with a guard. And what does the guard do for me? Protects you. Protects you, yep. Doesn't spin you up. Yep, so when that shaft is spinning inside there, if I should bump up against the guard, the, sh the shield will stop, but the shaft inside still spins. But when that's not there, what's gonna happen if I hit that? It, it could grab my clothes and then wrap me right around that thing. So, and people have had legs ripped off, arms ripped off, or their whole body gets wrapped around that thing. And look how big that space is. And, and this is a 540 RPM shaft. So that spins 540 uh, revolutions per minute or about seven, seven feet a second. So you can imagine going, what that would do to your body to go through that little space seven times every, every second. It, it's, um, you know, it's a devastating um, type of injury or entanglement. And, and, and then unfortunately, you know, it happens in New York sometimes or around the country too. Um, so you always want to stay away from that when it's running. Um, if I have to fix anything on my manure spreader, if I was using it and something was wrong with it, what should I do? Shut everything off. Yeah, I'd shut the, I'd shut the PTO off. I shut the tractor off and wait for everything to stop moving too before I go stick my hands in there because some machines will still run for a while longer um, uh, you know what when you shut that PTO off it doesn't stop instantly usually so you want to think about the type of clothes you're wearing too you should have um, close fitting clothes nothing loose or dangly if you have long hair keep that tied up under a hat or, or you know tucked tied up so that it can't get caught on something because sometimes people have been scalped on uh, rotating components like this roller chain here in this pulley. Um, you know, it looks like the shield is missing. <laughs> there was a shield on there at one time. You can see the attachments for it in the mounting spot, but it's gone now. So um, all of that kind of stuff should be guarded. So, um, so what we're going to do now is our, um, our mock PTO entanglement. So I've, I've got a Tyvek suit here to uh, simulate a, a person. And I tied the sh their shoelace to the yoke of the PTO. So I'm going to turn this on and uh, engage the PTO, and we'll see what happens. Um, all right. So not, not a good outcome for that person. So, um, oh, and when I get off the tractor, I also want to face it and use three points of contact. You shouldn't just jump off the tractor. Um, so you can see what happened, and that was just at a low idle. Um, you know, I didn't even have it revved up, and that person got pulled in there and wrapped right around it. Um, you know, so that would be, it would be a recovery. It wouldn't be a rescue here. Um, if you ever came upon a situation like that with somebody wrapped up, what should you, what should you do? Shut the tractor off. Shut the tractor off, yeah. What do you do next? 911. 911, yeah, yeah. You might have to run to, a, if you didn't have cell phone service here, you might have to run to the barn or a house or whatever and make that 911 call because you want to get 911 emergency services here as fast as possible. If they were um, wrapped around that but still alive, should you try to get them off? 
No, leave them where they lie. Yeah, so with an accident victim, um, you want to leave them where they lie. Maybe keep them as comfortable as possible. We could cause more damage to the victim if we tried to unwrap them off that PTO shaft. And the, the rescuers might actually have to cut the shaft. Like they might cut that shaft off and send the person in the shaft in the hospital or the ambulance, you know, the helicopter, and send the whole thing right to the hospital. So, um, Have you ever seen one like that, Jim? Uh, not in per not in real life, but they happen. They happen a lot. You know, we've we've had them even in close to NICAM. We've had a few in the past years. Um, so you make sure all the shields and guards are in place. Like this one was totally missing, but I told them I wanted the shaft exposed for this demonstration, um, so that it would we could wrap it up. Otherwise, if I tie the string to a, a plastic PTO shield, it'll break it. So I didn't want to break their PTO shield. <laughs> um, but we can see, on, if we take a look on this other tractor behind us here, um, so the front half of the shaft isn't connected, but we can see the rear half of the, of the, of the shaft is properly guarded. Um, I can spin that by hand so I know it's not frozen or stuck to the shaft. Um, and I, I can't pull that back from the universal joint so I know that, that those bearings are in place and it's working. Um, this is the implement master shield, so that's in place to, co to cover the implement um, input PTO stub shaft, so that's there. Sometimes those are missing. Um, and then on, the, the, on near the tractor stub shaft, we can see the master shield for the tractor, so that's in place. That shield should be there too. Sometimes those are missing as well, um, and that connects the universal joint there. There's a, actually a cover for the stub shaft on this, so when you're not using it, um, you put that cover on. Um, so this is prop, you know, all properly shielded, which is what you want to see. Um, any questions on, on PTO safety? So the big thing is just um, make sure you shut everything off before you go back and work on it. Sometimes there's clogs or plugs in machines and people will, to save a couple of minutes, they leave the thing running and they go back to try to unclog it or do whatever they have to do and then they get wrapped up on it. You know, there's been cases of people um, on manure spreaders, they've left the spreader running or they left the PTO engaged and they were scraping manure off it so it didn't freeze in the winter. Yeah, corn figures, yep, yep. When, um, I remember I used to live in Indiana and I used to go to these farm meetings um, and you go to shake a farmer's hand and the, like these old guys, their hand was missing or parts of their fingers were missing because it was from corn pickers. And they used to, they told me they were, sometimes the corn stalks would plug up in the corn picker and you could, and you could leave it running and grab one stock and, and the plug would go through and it would save a lot of time if, if you took that chance. But other times it would pull your hand in so fast you can't even let go of the corn stock. That's how fast the machinery runs. Like if you grabbed on a, a corn stock caught in a, caught in a corn picker, it can pull you in before you can even let go. You know, that's how fast it is, faster than your reflexes can react. So um, you want to make sure that um, everything is, is, is shut off before you go back and service it or work on it, like grease it, do anything like that. Um, and even maybe put the key in your pocket. So shut off the PTO, shut off the tractor's engine, put the key right in your pocket so nobody can start that up when you're back working on it. Um, and then uh, there, there's a lot of entanglements that happen around stationary pieces of equipment. So things like post hole diggers, silo blowers, um, things like that. And they have to stay in one place while, people, while they're running to do their job. So sometimes people will get too close to those when, when they're running. So always be thinking about how close you are to that, that power shaft. You should stay away from it. Uh, but sometimes if you're working around that all day long, you, some people forget sometimes. Like around uh, portable grain augers, sometimes that happens. If they're shoveling grain into the, into the, the, the pickup part of it, um, sometimes they might forget how close they are to that, that shaft and get wrapped up on it. So, um, and like there's a lot of young kids here too. So, um, you know, make sure that you stay out of the areas where work is being done too. But it was great to talk to all of you and uh, hope that you'll be safe back at your farms and um, try to keep safety as a, in the forefront of everything you do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>